Social Life of Monkeys Toque macaques have wealthy social lives and really distinct personalities. They live in social groups called troops that include 20 to 25 members. Each troop has a home range or neighborhood that typically overlaps with other troops of toque macaques. This can result in competition and conflict among rival troops for resources like food, water and sleeping sites. Home ranges with fruiting trees are the most popular as they provide an abundance of food. Having a stocked pantry is never a bad idea. Toque macaques strengthen bonds in their troop by hugging, grooming and sitting next to each other. Hugging typically happens when threats have passed, serving to comfort and calm each other. Grooming could be a regular group action, one that further solidifies the bond between individuals in a troop. Toque macaques work along to wash every other's hair exploitation their fingers, lips and sometimes teeth. When a toque old world monkey is out of action, grooming serves an important role, as other macaques help clean the wound from dirt and bugs. More attention is paid to the injured individual in order to help speed recovery. Toque macaque mothers play a huge role in how troops are formed. Female infants generally keep within the group they were born into and solely leave on rare occasions. However, with males it is different. When males reach maturity they leave to join a new group. It is not uncommon for males to move to a new group more than once in their lifetime. The most dominant male within the troop is named the alpha male. This individual is responsible for leading the troop and protecting it from predators and rival troops. This individual must continually maintain his dominance as other males are always nearby, waiting to take over. The alpha male is definitely recognized as being higher trim, more muscular and overall the most fit. Or in other words, he has great hair and looks like he spends a lot of time at the jungle gym. There is a hierarchy, or pecking order of members. This means that the highest ranking individual has the most power and is essentially the leader. When a toque macaque is born it inherits the ranking status of its mother. The hierarchy chain therefore begins with the mother ranking on top of the offspring. Members of one family ranking on top of or below another family, and certain troops ranking above or below other troops in a community. The rank of an individual, family or troop is important because it determines access to resources like food and water. For example, higher ranking individuals in a troop take food from lower ranking individuals in a troop. In general, the upper the rank, the longer you live. Because of higher access to the most effective food and best protect safety. Responsibility once raising the young, everyone in the troop is a teacher. Mothers give birth to one offspring a year and take care of infants until they are old enough to play on their own in juvenile groups. They learn a lot from their playmates, like how to communicate, the rules of play and how to get along well with others. They can jointly begin to exhibit their dominance patterns throughout play also. Similar to other primates, toque macaques learn by watching older monkeys in their troop. By mimicking behaviors such as facial expressions, young macaques begin to learn important non-verbal communication cues that will help them interact with other toque macaques. Possibilities within toque macaque troops and involve more than one monkey making a move. Group fission means that part of a group breaks off to start their own group. Group fusion is once two teams be part of to make a bigger cluster. There are many reasons this can occur, but most are due to hierarchy and are considered a survival tactic. If a family is low in rank and having a hard time getting access to resources, they may break off from a group and become the leaders of their own troop. Making their own rules. Sometimes, there is also power in numbers. Two teams connection along will mean larger territories and higher protection from different teams or from predators. Monkeys area unit most active, they spend a lot of time on the ground looking for food. However, a favorite spot for the toque macaques can be found high above the temples in the treetops of the forest canopy. These bifoliate homes offer safety from predators, as well as shelter from nature's elements. Fruit trees, like the ficus bengalensis, don't seem to be solely a secure haven however additionally give a sweet and delicious food source. Safety is that the darling priority within the lives of those monkeys. Before nightfall, toque macaques pick a tree to rest in and sleep. Although the troop could come to a favorite tree in their range. 
They rarely sleep in the same tree two nights in a row in order to keep predators from guessing their exact location. Once a tree is chosen, the troop members will then find positions on branches away from the trunk. When it's time to sleep, families can clump, like one big blanket, for warmth and protection. Foraging, finding food of their diet, toop macaques are omnivores. They eat plants, insects, and generally reptiles and birds after they area units simple to catch. Toop macaques maintain a cautious approach as they forage in the forest, nervously looking around and eyeing their surroundings. For predators or rival neighboring groups of monkeys. A unique adaptation of the toop catarine that helps with search is their cheek pouches. Much like a poke, these pouches can hold food items that macaques find as they shop around the forest. This allows them to simply carry their food with them if they have to create a fast break loose a predator or perhaps a lot of dominant monkey. Watering holes area unit visited daily throughout the season for a pleasant refreshing drink. These watering holes can be near ponds, lakes or rivers. Toop macaques are excellent swimmers. Swimming provides an expanded foraging territory for toop macaques looking for resources. When food is accessible a toop catarine has no bother assembling a bountiful feast within the forest. They merely stuff their mouths and cheek pouches full so grab what they can. Walking on their hind legs if they have to. If their only option is a protein-rich bug sitting on a limb in the middle of a waterhole. They'll just swim right to it and bring it back to shore. They aren't meticulous eaters, and they will eat what they can get to survive. If their home ground is on the sting of a close-by city, they won't hesitate to raid a garbage bin or obtain fallen fruit from a truck or tramper traveling close to their forest. Toop macaques are brave and curious and most of the time they do not appear to be afraid of people due to their close interactions with tourists at popular sites in Sri Lanka's cultural triangle. Groups is an important part of the toop macaques' survival. Being able to speak with their troop or different animals within the forest will mean life or death. Communication may be a key means within which these monkeys warn others of danger or reconcile once a fight. Toop macaques use a variety of communication methods including vocalizations, body postures and facial expressions. Used to communicate a variety of things to the group such as alerting them to danger, the presence of food, or even an awareness of dominance. 30 different calls have been recorded. Scream calls alarm the group to nearby predators. Loud calls from males can establish distance between different approaching teams. Food calls alert others in the troop that an abundant food source has been located and they should come quick to enjoy the buffet. Troop members often respond by running in the direction of the call. Contact calls square measure quieter hums or grunts used whereas communication inside the troop. This soft chatter is the most common vocalization. And ensure faces to speak their intentions to different monkeys and animals. A fear grimace communicates to others that it is fearful and does not want to fight. The teeth are exposed and clenched, almost like a smile. When toop macaques wish to threaten others. They open their mouth, keeping their teeth covered. Toop macaques build this face to claim dominance and avoid physical altercations. If the other macaque does not respond appropriately, a fight will ensue. It is the macaque's way of using their words before their fists. Flexible, the toop macaque is a clever animal who makes the most of what it has. Toop macaques are considered to be arboreal which means they spend most of their time in trees. Because of this, the toop old world monkey should be custom made for rise, with excellent control over their hands and feet. While moving through the trees, they walk on all fours. This is called quadrupedal locomotion, and it allows them to balance safely and move about among the branches of the trees. In macaque troops, the roles of males and females are very different. The males are responsible for leading the group and settling fights, while the females care for the young. Mothers haven't solely themselves to worry for, but their offspring as well. If they are lucky enough to be at the highest of the social hierarchy, food, water and shelter should be rather easy to find. However, if they're all-time low-ranking monkey in a very cluster, times are tougher and their choices are fewer. The ripest, most succulent fruits square measure off limits and they are not allowed to forage for food in the best places. However, females can improve their social status through alliances formed with other females. 
Females often cooperate with one another, and a low-ranking female may even form an alliance with a higher-ranking female. Choosing the right mate, especially the alpha male in the troop, is a smart move for climbing the social ladder. Tuk macaques live in a forest ecosystem composed of a variety of animals and plants. Among the Tuk macaques, neighbors are the Asian elephant, sloth bear, Indian gray mongoose and axis deer. Over 400 species of birds grace the skies and roost in the trees, including the peacock, mina, spotted dove, Indian pied hornbill, green imperial pigeon and orange-breasted pigeon. Scorpions and termites can jointly crawl on the forest floor. These monkeys must be careful of predators and other threats, including the mugger crocodile, leopard, cobra, Russell's viper, Indian python, Asian water monitor, and even dogs. Neighbor to the toque macaque is the termite. They are black, winged insects measuring under an inch less than three centimeters long and can be found living in dirt mound colonies or underground. Some colonies are so large they can include up to 10,000 individual termites. Tuk macaques, mongoose, Asian water monitors, scorpions, and varied forest birds, all feast on termites. The best chance for a termite buffet occurs during certain seasons of the year when the termites leave their mound to find a mate in order to start a new colony. After a brief flight, the termites can land and shed their wings, continue to seem for a mate on the bottom. Once a mate is chosen, pairs seal themselves underground when finding a location for a new nest. During this time, large swarms of termites make it easy for predators to catch them. It doesn't take much aim or skill since there are so many termites flying around. A simple flick of the tongue, grab of the hand or snap of the beak, delivers a snack each time. Tuk macaques and other animals in their habitat create a unique community. There are three types of symbiotic relationships that occur in this setting, mutualistic, parasitic and commensal. Mutualistic relationships occur when both species benefit. For example, Tuk macaques have a mutualistic relationship with two alternative species of monkeys. Hanuman langurs and purple-faced langurs. The macaques and langurs search for food together, but they do not directly compete. The langurs primarily eat leaves and the Tuk macaques consume mostly fruit. This means they typically don't get in the way of each other when feeding in the treetops. When one species benefits at the expense of another, it's called a parasitic relationship. Tuk macaques are hosts to many parasites, including the whipworm and hookworm. Both use the tuk catarine as a food supply, living in the intestine until passed through their waste. These parasites take away nutrients necessary for the tuk macaque, which can often leave the monkeys sick. Lands on the forest floor. This helps close hunt animals UN agency couldn't reach food above within the tree while not the presence of the tuk catarine. Esbetan coexisting in South Asia for centuries. In folklore and stories passed down from generation to generation. These primates have been praised for their intelligence and curiosity. Some folks believe that seeing a catarine once effort their house is smart. Luck, however, as the need for land continues to increase, humans and primates become ever closer neighbors in their shared habitats. As these two species share additional and extra space, Coexistence becomes harder to accomplish and challenges arise. As populations of people increase, so does the use of land, water, and the world's natural resources. Climate change has been discussed among scientists for years, and more and more people are acknowledging the very real changes occurring on the planet. Melting glaciers, disappearing icebergs, receding shorelines, and severe weather all point towards the impact of climate change on people, plants and animals. Tuk macaques face additional abrupt seasons, with longer dry spells and intense rainy seasons. Drought, flooding, tsunamis and cyclones are all very real weather conditions these monkeys must face. Finding food and safe shelter throughout these times is terribly troublesome. If food becomes scarce in their natural setting, macaques will look for food elsewhere, often raiding garbage bins and farmers' fields in nearby villages. Many who visit the ancient ruins offer food to the monkeys, encouraging them to rely on humans as a source for their next meal. Unfortunately, encounters with humans have also led to tuk macaques being taken from the wild for sale as pets, further decreasing local populations. These increasing interactions between 
humans and primates could lead to greater conflict between them. Conservationists and scientists are trying various solutions to help ensure the relationship between primates and humans remains positive. Relocating Tukmakaks, providing education to the local people and preserving habitat are all actions that strive to ensure the survival of this endangered species. Relocation of certain individuals or troops has been attempted when conflict arises between people and Tukmakaks. However, this method has not been very successful. Often the relocated macaques are not welcomed by the local troop of monkeys and end up being displaced yet again into nearby villages, creating problems for other townspeople. Awareness and education are needed to ensure Tuk macaques continue to thrive in the world around them. Encouraging people not to feed the Tuk macaques is key in minimizing these monkeys' dependence on humans for food. Closing up garbage bins properly will discourage the monkeys from feeding near homes. Understanding that these intelligent, free-roaming monkeys don't belong as pets in homes is additionally essential. Tuk macaques, you are on your way to helping protect this unique species. Shared knowledge creates awareness and can lead to action. A positive perspective towards all life also can facilitate build a conservation impact once combined with actions that benefit the world around us. While you may not live in Sri Lanka with Tuk macaques, you probably do live with a wide variety of animals near your own home. Think about ways you can help these animals. Don't feed wildlife. Encouraging wildlife to depend on you means they aren't using natures. This hurts wildlife in the long run. Feeding wildlife can also be dangerous. It's important to let wild animals be wild and observe them only from a distance. Choose pets wisely. Though several laws exist around the world to safeguard wild animals, the banned pet trade still takes several wild animals directly from their homes. When the time comes to add a furred, feathery, or scaly addition to your family, be sure you know where it came from. Create habitats. Consider making a friendly place for life to thrive in your yard. Provide a water supply, a place for animals to live and plants that provide food. Before you know it, your backyard could be home to all kinds of insects, plants, and animals. The National Life Federation will even certify your surround as life-friendly. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce your consumption, achieve a small footprint. Reuse items that normally are 